Well, how do that chums desire, Captain of the Stews, and today, chums, I've got myself a cup of tea. So it's a cup of tea with Captain Stephen. What am I talking about today? Funny enough, not No Man's Sky today, people. Heck no. We're going to be just talking about gaming in general and how things have changed somewhat since digitization and moving away from cartridges and hard copies to streaming services and where we are now, people. And where it might lead to, perhaps. Anyway, just have a little sip. Nice. Right, oh, okay. So, back in my day, <laughs> fudging heck, I'm going to sound like my granddad now. This is, I never thought I'd be doing a video like this, to be honest, people. But yeah, I'm going to be jumping back to the good old days, but I'd say today's are still good days. You know what I mean? So it's, it's not quite like my granddad sort of mini thing that he goes off on but anyway here we go let's uh, pop on over to my reaction camera and this here is an arcade i think this is an arcade that somebody's built inside of their house but that's marvel versus capcom 3 there tekken 7 you've got soul soul caliber or soul edge depending on what region he was in he's got the turtles freaking game there man this guy's got good taste okay right okay i didn't watch it this far i just watched that start bit but anyway people what I wanted to get at was, in the good old day, I used to jump on over to the arcades and plow 50p pieces or pound coins into arcade machines, so I got to see what the likes of the new games that were coming out might be. I mean, they'd hit arcade cabinets, you'd be playing them for weeks and months, and you'd be like, oh, I hope this comes to home console so I don't have to plow all my freaking hard-earned coinage into these machines, and you'd become a Tekken master. And then when it did come out on, on like a console or something, like PlayStation, you'd buy that console because it's got that game on it that you've been playing in the arcade for so long. It's why I bought a Super Nintendo for Street Fighter 2, which was freaking epic when that came to, to SNES. Yeah, to the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Yeah, and it sold like hotcakes, that console, thanks to the arcade machines, you know? And then it was the same with Tekken with, say, the PlayStation, you know? And there was games like, say, Marvel, Children of the Atom, which, X-Men, Children of the Atom, which was freaking amazing in the arcade. Yeah, and, and that's why I bought a Sega Saturn, so I could play that on the best console proper, um, you know, platform. And that's what sold games to gamers, was going to the arcades, playing what you liked, and then hoping that it came to a console. And if it did come to a console, that was your console of choice. So you could pick up that game and continue playing it without having to plow your money into arcade cabinets. And then it moved to, well, after a while, after we moved away from cartridges, I mean, I even had a Neo Geo at one stage because I loved freaking Art of Fighting and King of Fighters and all that sort of goodness. Yes, and that was, that was not cheap because I, I had to import games and all sorts of stuff. But then it sort of moved away from cartridge-based console type games to CDs, you know, and then to DVDs and then to Blu-ray. And that's kind of where we are now. So I've made a couple of leaps, but when it was on PlayStation 1 and Sega Saturn and all that sort of stuff, there were gaming magazines that came out. And on the front covers of gaming magazines, you'd actually be given demo discs like this. Even PC games as well. You can see PC Gamer there and stuff like that. But a lot of them were actually PlayStation CDs as well. You can see amongst all of those PlayStation CDs. Some of my best gaming magazines were the ones that provided the best gaming demo discs. And you'd be playing these demo discs, reading the magazines, and you'd be hoping inside that magazine it would come up with some of the cheats or hacks or some of the games that you've got scuppered or stuck in, you know, or helpful guides or playthroughs and things. It was a very different world back then, before Tinterweb really took over with streaming services. One of my favourite games magazines was Edge magazine. Edge I found to be very sort of balanced when it came to their reviews. They weren't, they didn't feel like they were bought or swayed by the gaming industry. They said what they felt and it felt like they knew what they were talking about. And it felt that their reviewers actually had the same background as myself and shared similar sorts of mindsets as myself. And I really enjoyed Edge magazine. There was another one I liked on Super Nintendo called Super Play, which was freaking awesome. I think I've still got a biro. I, I sent something into them, a cheat or something. I think it was a moves list for um, Turtles Tournament Fighters. And I think it got published in there and they sent me a 
a um a biro i think i've still got it somewhere yeah actually i i think i might know where it is i'll go see if it's there i won't be a second well i'm back people on my hunt for my biro <laughs> i can't find it anyway so moving on i mean there were so many others that i used to like there really was but yeah gaming magazines has sort of moved to the interwebs and yes edge magazine is now sort of no i don't want to allow notifications thank you very much but edge is still sort of going but over on games radar and so yeah it's moved over to games radar you can still get the magazine i believe i mean it looks like there's a an issue right there as you can see it there so yeah you can probably still pick up edge magazine but i very much doubt you're ever going to see the likes of a demo disc frequenting the cover of edge magazine and yeah you can still jump over to games radar and watch their reviews and things like that and i don't find them too sort of you know bias in any sort of way shape or form but they just don't seem to get the same level of traction as the likes of ign but then IGN, you've got all this stuff about, are they biased? Have they been bought out? They do 10, of 10 out of 10 reviews sometimes that get, you know, <laughs> panned as if to say, hold on, why is this a 10 out of 10? And yeah, it, it's difficult to trust them in some instances. And because we haven't got the arcade machines of old, and we haven't really got many ways of, you know, testing demos in this sort of streaming service even though it's it'd be perfect for demos and streaming services every now and again on psn store you get the odd demo pop up which may give you access to a section of a game to see if you want to play out the rest of it which is all well and good but i know that when playstation 5 or, or even playstation 4 at that when it first launched they said that you would be able to hit up a game play the first hour of it and if you liked it buy it if you didn't like it don't buy it and that's what they said that they were going to be bringing into the playstation store and as far as i have ever been playing i haven't seen that feature pop up on hardly any game you know sometimes they drop a demo of a game but it's usually just a mini section of the game that doesn't really give you a full idea of the game i mean there was that forespoken that came out just a little while ago you could play the demo of that but it was kind of like a demo that they created off of a, a point in the game rather than giving you a sense of the game it's it's hard to describe to be honest but i just don't feel that sometimes playing a demo doesn't give you the full idea of what you're going to be buying into and with games now that are like 60 70 quid a pop when they actually first drop it's very difficult to say, yeah, I'm getting value for monies. I'll tell you what, I'll jump on over onto the PlayStation and we'll take a look, see, shall we, people, at what demos I can find on the PlayStation Store right now. Okay, right, well, I'm over on my PlayStation. Now, you would think it would just be a simple case of going to search at the top here and just typing in the word demo, right? You'd think that would be the case. Yeah, it's, you search, and it just brings back everything that's got the word demon in it, uh, which is not really overly helpful. I mean, scrolling down, you are going to find the odd demo that says free there. But other than that, it, <laughs> it's really hard to find freaking demos. Yeah, and then it takes me out of the PlayStation Store. But yeah, it, it, there's no real way of finding the dang thing. I mean... <laughs> You can try to go into a free to play. So if you go all the way to the bottom here, free to play, a lot of these are like online service games, like the likes of Destiny. But sometimes they can pop the odd demo into here every now and again, which, yeah, it, it can be really hard to find yourself a demo of one of the latest games. There needs to be an area inside of the PlayStation Store where it's just demos, so you can actually try out games before you buy them. I mean, if I just go into any old game, I mean, what they suggested is you could go into a game, like say, I don't know, this one here, and you can actually play the first hour or so of it. I can't see where you can do that. You can scroll down here. You can't see that there's any demo available of this game or how you go about doing the free trial of it before you buy it. I, it's just not right, to be honest. You know, if you're expected to spend out that sort of money, the only way that you know whether a game is any good is by waiting for a review to drop. And even then, I've come across the pitfalls of bias that I've already put out there, people. And then some of the games that you purchase, 
it just doesn't quite add up to some of the reviews in some cases. And also, as a lot of games now feel almost copy and pasted of previous games. There's nothing that's really broke the mold. You know when Mario went from being 2D platformer to being a 3D affair? There's not been any sort of things that have jumped that sort of barrier of being mind-blowing in a new paradigm of gaming. The only thing that's come close for me in the last, what, six years has been you know, No Man's Sky because that's given us a procedural universe. We've gone from open gay, open web, to open planet to open solar system to open universe which is freaking amazing in my eyes and that game has really drawn me in and that's what i've built my channel on but there hasn't been anything else that's really grabbed my attention and says this is special since no man's sky it's like hogwarts legacy i jumped in and started playing hogwarts legacy and with all the moves with all the magic and the lightning coming out of hands and things like that and being able to pull things towards you and push them away I was like, hold on, this is just Star Wars Fallen Order <laughs> with a different skin on it. It's exactly the same freaking skills and some of the puzzles. And I'm like, OK, um, it's just a reskin. It's just a freaking reskin. And then I started losing interest in it, plus the bad guys in it. OK, they summoned a dragon that ate a teacher that you had no interactions with right at the start of the game. That's a bit naughty. That's a bit naughty. And, <laughs> and then you find out that they've given a bellyache to some lass in a village. And you're like... OK, these guys aren't all that terrible, to be honest. I don't really want to go and destroy them. You know, ending them, it doesn't feel kind of... I've met more... I've met bigger gits in real life myself, you know, and they're still walking three today. <laughs> it's like, well... Uh, yeah, I just didn't find the drive to complete that game. I really didn't. I'd put it down. Um, the only game that's really made me want to pursue and beat it was Elden Ring, just so I could say I've beaten a freaking FromSoft game, and Elden Ring was awesome. But it was only awesome because the rest of the games that came out at the time were freaking terrible. And, uh, and that's kind of the same with Hogwarts Legacy. It's the only game that's actually jumped out and said, this might be special, but it, it, it wasn't really, like I say, pretty much a copy and paste game of other games. I'm still waiting for something that completely blows my mind. I mean, Crisis, when that first came out, inside of that beautiful engine that put out the real foliage type looking forests and things like that, that was exciting for me back then. And Unreal Engine 5 is really exciting exciting for me now we're starting to see some titles coming out for unreal engine 5 so perhaps i'm speaking a little bit too soon but again you, you get all these shiny lovely looking games but are they worth playing are they going to draw you in are they going to captivate you are they going to shift a paradigm in gaming are they going to pull in the excitement like the old arcades used to do you know, are you going to pick up a demo and say, you know what, I've got to buy this game after playing the demo? Or are you going to play the demo and go, oh, I don't know whether I like it or not, but there's nothing else that I want to play right now. So you know what? Yes, I'm going to spend 60 quid and just hope that I can get into it like the likes of Forspoken. I don't think so, you know. <laughs> It's just not quite there, is it? So what I'm trying to say to you is I'm really excited for games when I see something that really piques my interest. Nightingale has really piqued my interest. And I'm hoping that I can get into the beta testing of that. Blue Protocol, that's piqued my interest. But at the same time, I'm a little bit, I'm on the fence with that one. I'm like, hmm, is it going to be good? Is it not? I'm really excited for Dragon's Dogma 2. But I want to know what's happening with the pawn system. Is the pawn system still going to be in there where you can, you know, send out your players and stuff like that because that was kind of the magic of the previous dragon's dogma no other game done that before no other game has done that since and if they remove that is it going to remove some of the you know, what made it special or is rehashing it going to sort of just feel like a copy and paste of the old game you see what I mean? it's so difficult for games developers to captivate gamers have we just been oversaturated and spoiled or are we just getting a little bit bored of the same old, same old copy and paste recipes that we're seeing in games? It seems to be that they get a formula, they stick with it. They're like, okay, well, people like this, so we're not going to move away from it. 
But you've got to think of other sorts of areas inside of industry. It's like McDonald's. Yes, they've got their awesome menu that everybody knows and loves, and they get quite used to it. But after a while, it gets a bit dull. They have to introduce a new burger or something new into the roster to bring people in and say, oh, I'm going to try that. Even if they try and go, that's freaking wrong. They're still going to go and order their old go-tos, you know? But at least they try. And I want to see the games industry putting out those Mingin burgers, but games, you know? And the only way you do that is through the indie area. But do indie devs and indie games get the spotlight they need in this current saturated market of bias? inside of the gaming world. They just haven't got the marketing resources to compete with the gaming giants, so it's very hard to find a gem amongst games. It really is. And um, yeah, that's, that's kind of where I am with gaming in today's world. And I don't know where it can move from here to actually bring things in. I mean, when I say about saturation, you've only just got to go and say like um, the mobile devices and take a look at, say, the gaming market there, and how many clones of games you see. It's like Flappy Bird when that came out. Freaking nice. But then you've got, you know, Flappy Fish now, or Floating Dolphin. And it's pretty much the same freaking idea with just some different sprites. And that's kind of how I feel mainstream is going. You've got all these lovely games like Watch Dogs, but then that just feels like GTA with a few bolt-ons from other games thrown into it. It wasn't as open-worldy as I would have liked. It was too hand-holdy. And <laughs> it just didn't live up to the hype. And that's another thing is overhype and things like that. You get to see gameplay trailers that drop. It's like, say, Cyberpunk. You actually see the guy do wall running and fire rocket launchers at people's heads. I, well, I didn't get a freaking rocket or grenade launcher in that game. Yes, I had some pretty OP weapons, but I don't think I had anything that did that side sort of thing. And I know I still can't do wall running even now. And that was supposed to be gameplay. And we see this time and time again, people. And I just want to be able to buy something that is actually legit. Yeah, it's just like watching a movie trailer. Yeah, if you watch a movie trailer, some some of the movie trailers, though, oh, granted, show you all the best bits, and you go to the movie, and you're like, well, that wasn't worth watching, <laughs> because I've seen all the best bits in the bloody trailer. But at least you know what you're going to see, roughly, because you've seen a legit trailer. Trailers for video games should be similar. You know, what you see in a video game trailer should be what you get in the game, but that's hardly ever the case. Hardly ever. Sometimes it is, but hardly ever. Anyway, people, it's kind of more of a discussional piece on this one. So what I'm looking for off the back of this, cup of tea with Captain Steve, because this is usually to put smiles on people's faces, but right now, I'd imagine your faces are like, hmm, he's got a point, but... And that's the bit that I'm interested in, the but. Cheer me up. <laughs> in the comments, let me know what's exciting you out there. Maybe I've missed a game that's on your radar that's not on mine. Let me know what you've seen and what you think is going to be fun. Or maybe shift that paradigm. Maybe I've missed something. It doesn't matter what platform it's on. Even if I haven't got that platform, I would love to see it. Heck yes, I would. And uh, yeah, if there's a different sort of avenue, somebody on, on, say, YouTube that does reviews that you really like. I mean, for me, there is a reviewer that I really like. Heck yes, there is. He's pretty darn freaking awesome. He's called Werferby. I'll bring up his channel, actually, people. Werferby. And he's, he's really cool. Uh, he's done some very, very good reviews. Let me just jump back over onto Tinterweb so you can see his sort of... There you go. You can see I'm subscribed there. Worth a buy. Now, he does a lot of RTS games, and I'm not a massive fan of RTS games, but his review of No Man's Sky is spot on. His review of, say, um, oh, he's done loads of, uh, of sort of other games that I really enjoyed his um, reviews of. I agree with this guy nine times out of ten. There's the odd game where I'm like, hmm, I enjoyed that, but he didn't. He done one on, what is it, the Space Bastards game? I can't remember what exactly it's called. Um, so if I just put in Bastards, and I bought this game because of his review. Yeah, Void Bastards. Awesome review, that one. Yeah, take a watch of that. Outer Worlds, because of his review of Outer Worlds, I actually didn't bother with Outer Worlds. But I've seen other people start playing it and how much I've enjoyed it. And I am wondering, should I jump in and have, it, have a quick go myself and make up my own sort of mind up on that one? But yeah, I've bought Void Bastards. I've done, an, I've done a review. I've got a playlist on Void Bastards. If you want to see that, I'll put a link to my Void Bastards playlist up there, people. Or review. One or the other. It'd be one of them. 
Anyway, people, so yeah, that's that's somebody I go to for trusted reviews. Who do you go to for trusted reviews? Who do you feel hasn't got much bias? And who do you feel I should be watching out there inside of the viewerverse? Heck yes. Until next time, people, you've all been freaking awesome. Heck yes, you have. But yeah, thank you very much for joining me. My tea's gone cold, I think. Oh, I took a massive mouthful there. And yes, it's, it's just about lukewarm. I'm going to go drink that. And um, I'll see you guys again soon. Bye, goodbye, and goodbye again.